Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping holding a virtual meeting last night. Many topics were covered, but somehow over the course of what was a three and a half hour meeting, COVID origins never came up. Joining us now to talk about what happened and what this could mean for U.S.-China relations moving forward, we've got contributing editor for 1945 and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War, Gordon Chang, back with us this morning. Gordon, good to see you. Good to see you, Robin. Thank you. Well, three and a half hours, a long day for the president last night, a long night as well. This didn't get started until well after 7 o'clock Eastern. Um, 762,000 Americans that we know about have died from COVID-19. How does this not come up during that discussion? It doesn't come up because Biden doesn't want to discuss it. During their two-hour phone call in February, Biden, by his own admission, didn't talk about this at all. I'm sure it didn't come up in their September call. And obviously, you can't bring it up because it really means that if you killed 764,000 Americans, you got to do something about it. Biden doesn't want to do something about it. He wants to talk. And talk, you know, they say, well, we don't want to veer into conflict, as Rachel just said. But, you know, conflicts are not preceded by an absence of communication. They're preceded by communication of the type we had last night for, as you say, three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people, myself included, were wondering if the Beijing Winter Olympics would be brought up at all. We're 80 days away from those February 4th opening ceremonies. They didn't come up. Right now, it looks like Americans are going to go to China. That's a huge win for the economy of Beijing. Did that surprise you at all? Uh, I'm a little bit surprised because people were saying that uh, Xi Jinping was going to invite Biden to the opening ceremony. And I didn't think Biden would go because he's actually talking about a diplomatic boycott. Um, but nonetheless, um, you know, th these are things where you just continue on with discussions of maintaining relations while Beijing kills Americans with coronavirus, as you point out, with fentanyl. Um, you know, you have theft of U.S. intellectual property. Last year, they tried to subvert the U.S. government by encouraging Americans to go out on the streets and commit violent acts. That's an act of war. So, you know, this isn't a totally inappropriate discussion. If Biden sh shouldn't have had it in the first place, but if he did, he should have said, we're cutting relations and we're imposing the greatest costs on China because we believe that killing Americans is something that is not good. Yeah, and the biggest slave internment camps on the planet right now are in China. Uh, the Uyghur Muslims, uh, there's forced genocide there. There have been reports of murder. Um, Enos Cantor uh, plays in the NBA. He's a center for the Boston Celtics. He has been the only player, active player in the NBA that's been outspoken against the human rights atrocities uh, that the Chinese are committing against the Uyghurs. He put out a tweet. Uh, take a look at this. How can I stay silent when my brothers and sisters are getting tortured, gang rape, forced abortions, and sterilized every day? People are scared to speak up. Money, fame, and fear are keeping them blind and silenced. Uh, what's interesting here is that Nike, which is a big sponsor of the NBA, a lot of those jerseys, a lot of those products are made in these internment camps. But the commissioner of the NBA, no one wants to talk about that. Yes. Well, you know, Nike had its shoes made at uh, sub-Korean subcontractor, um, which is a three-decade relationship. Nike had to know that the conditions were basically approximated slave labor because Uyghur women were transported all the way across China to work in these conditions. And you have LeBron James, who lectures us about all sorts of issues, didn't seem that this was important enough to discuss himself. Um, that's shameful. Of course not. LeBron James is making hundreds of millions of dollars from Nike. There is there is biggest sponsor. He's not going to say anything bad about where the products are made. Right. It's 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 terrible. Shameful. Um, President Biden started the conversation. He immediately tried to cool down any conflict between our two countries. Take a listen. As I've said before, it seems to me our responsibility as leaders of China and the United States is to ensure that the competition between our countries does not veer into conflict, whether intended or unintended. Just simple, straightforward competition. To start a three and a half hour conversation, that's how he begins it, Gordon. I'm wondering how you think China uh, views Joe Biden. Xi Jinping referred to him as his old friend. Yeah, well, we know. We, we've seen propaganda talk about this, that the United States is incapable. They said this while Afghanistan was falling. They said the United States can't win wars anymore because it can't deal with the Taliban. It could not hope to counter a magnificent China. We have heard this as a consistent propaganda theme since the middle of March when China sent its top two diplomats to Anchorage. 
So we know what they think. And also, we have those comments from Di Dongsheng of November 28th of last year. They were um, disrespectful in the extreme. We have Chinese uh, propaganda workers on Twitter actually talking about Biden being too old. He likes to bluff, doesn't know what he's talking about. This is a point where the Chinese do not respect the United States and they don't respect Biden either. It's dangerous yeah. because then they're going to do things which are exceedingly reckless. And why should they? The American president doesn't give them any reason. He doesn't bring up COVID origins in three and a half hours. That blew my mind. Uh, Gordon Chang, thanks so much for your time and your expertise. We appreciate it. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much, Rob. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.